Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to episode 192 of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name's Chris Hollifield. I am your host. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for listening, however you got here, however you're consuming it, however you're listening. Thank you so much for checking the podcast out. This episode, Charity O'Hodigan from the Hello Sweetie podcast. She sat down, we chatted, we had a great conversation, found out about her life, found out how the podcast started, just had a really good conversation with her. I'm going to be getting into that here in just a minute. Of course, want to uh, mention our sponsor for this episode, Club 50 West right in downtown Salt Lake City, right at 50 West Broadway, right under uh, the Broadway Media Towers there. Uh, Their website, 50 West SLC, is where you can go and find out about all the upcoming shows they got going on, comedy, music. They they, uh, got all kinds of events going on there. You can connect with them on Facebook and Twitter as well. Speaking of Club 50 West, just the other night, I had my very first I Am Salt Lake Live show with Carrie Jackson, Paul Duane, Levi Rounds. It was a fantastic show. I want to give a big thank you to everybody that was able to make it out that evening. We had a great crowd for it. I couldn't have been happier. I thought it was a success. And uh, it was recorded, so it will be in an upcoming podcast episode. So you're going to want to make sure to subscribe to I Am Salt Lake so you don't miss out on that and uh, check that out. also want to give a big thank you to uh, Cat Palmer, Cat Palmer Photography, for taking photos of that evening. If you're connected on Facebook, either through my personal page or on uh, the I Am Salt Lake fan page, you probably saw the photos. Make sure to connect with her. Uh, CatPalmer.com is the website. She's also on Facebook. Connect with her if you need any photos taken for family or personal headshots. If you need uh, any photos for your event or business taken, connect with her. Uh, She's the person for that. So like I said, Charity O'Hodigan is on this episode. We sat down at the American Musicians Radio Studios here in Salt Lake City. We chatted, had a great time getting to know her story and finding out uh, all about the Hello Sweetie podcast and her life. So without any more chatting on my end, why don't you join me as I chat with Charity and uh, find out her story. I like to kind of go back a little bit. This is kind of something I enjoy when I bring people on the podcast, kind of find out where they're from, where were they born, where, you know, what, what their childhood is like. So let's start. I mean, where were you born? Um, I was born in Powell, Wyoming, which is a really tiny town in North Wyoming. Um, my parents were college students and so there wasn't a uh, hospital in the little town that they lived in and thus I was born there. In big family, little family, siblings? Um, I am the oldest of five, um, but my parents got divorced, so there was two, and then a big gap, and then three more. There's actually more space between me and some of my siblings than between me and my stepfather. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I was 19 when my youngest sibling was born. Close to your family? Um, Not really. Not my really? My dad and I are really super close. He lives in Wyoming. Um. My mom's side of the family, not so much anymore, but we're just, you know, they're far away and we're different. I'm the sort of black sheep on that side. <laughs> what were you like as a child? Because, I mean, to me, it's like, okay, what were you What were you like growing up? Were you getting in trouble? Were you a good kid? <laughs> I mean, you know, we we know Charity now, but it's like, how was she when she was a little kid? Do, do, what well, we don't, really, we don't really know her now. I don't know you that well, and that's why I want to get to know you. But I, I would imagine you probably got into trouble. No, I was the opposite. I was uh, eager to please. I loved school. I was a. Uh, I got good grades. Um, yeah, awkward. Su- never outgrew that. Super shy. Super awkward. Overcompensate by talking a lot. <laughs> so yeah. Did you have any favorite subjects in school? Yeah, I read and wrote a lot. I actually wrote short stories and stuff. And um, it was. It's weird. I just moved. And if you would have interviewed me. Two months ago, I would never have remembered this stuff, but I like went through all these boxes of like 
old shit from when I was, you know, little, little, little that my parents had saved yeah. and like shipped to me. And I found all these short stories that I wrote when I was a kid, like kindergarten, first grade and second grade that actually participated in like competitions and nationally and stuff like that that I won awards for. It's like dumb little old stories about unicorns and stuff. It's, it's weird how that will spark memories, yeah. you know, and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, I remember that. I remember when I was 10 or eight or, you know, five even, you know, we forget that. I think we block parts of our lives out. You know, it's that, like maybe if there was a stressful time as a child, it's like it's blocked out. Can't remember until you see a picture. Yeah, it was weird. I just kind of and then I remembered writing them and um, I wrote one for my little brother and actually like re could recall giving it to him and reading it with him and stuff. And I had I would never have remembered that. But yeah, so now it's cool to like remember. Oh, yeah, I'm actually somewhere inside me. There's like a pretty good writer. So do you still enjoy writing? I haven't done it in like decades, but I'm actually kind of like prompted to now. Sure. Um, but yeah, reading uh, all that stuff, hated math, loved science, of course. And that's my section on the podcast. So that carried over. What brought you to Utah from Wyoming? Um, lily padded through Colorado and stuff like that, um, South Dakota. And then uh, when my parents divorced, my dad moved to Wyoming and my mom moved here. So to, to Salt Lake? Uh, no, to a, a little tiny town in northern Utah, very small population, uh, very conservative. And then once I graduated... What, what town? What town? Uh, or don't you want to say? I don't know if I want to Okay, no, that's fine. We don't, we, don't, we don't need to say. We don't need to say. So then what brought you from there to, to Salt Lake then? I actually went to college at Weber State. Okay. Um, for like a semester and a half uh, and then moved to Wyoming to live with my dad because my parents were divorced when I was in high school and I didn't get to see him much. I kind of made up for some lost time when I was uh, so, so after So after you were done with, with school at Weber, mm -hmm. you went back to Wyoming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for about two years, um, stayed there, kind of just meandered around and tried to figure out what I wanted to do and then kind of did and came back to Utah and uh, got married uh, to a Mormon guy in the temple. <laughs> really? I, yeah. just, I didn't know that about you. Yeah. And then moved to Salt Lake. <laughs> what temple did you get married in? Uh, the Salt Lake Temple. The Salt Lake Temple. Yeah. Was that, I mean, uh, growing up though, was that kind of something you always wanted to do was to get married to somebody, a Mormon guy? Was that kind of? Yeah. Converted when I moved to Utah. Okay. okay. So, so you weren't, you weren't raised Mormon in, nope. in Wyoming then? Um, yeah, that was one of the things that moving to a tiny town in northern Utah, I think, kind of brings with it. <laughs> yeah. So my mom did. And then, of course, we as the kids did. And so, yeah, since about junior high, I was I was going to do that. And then I did it. And then it was not for me. And <laughs> so, yeah, I know you play music or you used to play music. Mm -hmm. What what instrument do you play? Um. I don't currently play an instrument. Well, I grew but, up playing piano and trumpet, but I was the lead singer uh, when I was in the couple of bands that I was in. Okay, okay, because that's you know I, that was one thing I knew about you, and I was like, I want, I want to talk music with her for for a little bit, you know, before we before we talk about the podcast, obviously. So you were you were a singer in a band, but you grew up playing piano and and you, what what was the other instrument? Trumpet. Trumpet. Yeah, actually, like in school. Yeah, or? I actually was terrible at piano, but we had one, so I just kind of you know messed with it. I learned to kind of play by ear. But I played trumpet from fifth grade through my freshman year of college. Yeah. Wow. I was like a trumpet toting band dork, like the whole thing. I loved it. And you played in bands and, mm -hmm. and school uh, bands. School yeah. bands playing the Pet trumpet. Band. Yeah. So the band what was the band that you were in? Do you care to give the name of that or would you sure. rather not so people can't can't Google it and find <laughs> it and No, we were pretty good actually. I like uh, Radio Courtesy was the name of the it was kinda like a bubblegum poppy punk band that I was in. Uh, the first one that I was in that got any sort of anything. Um, and then when that band broke up um, for a little while, I didn't do anything. And then I realized that I'm a crazy person when I'm not making music. So I got in another band um, called The Camino Arrival. And you did vocals in both of them? Yeah, I actually did uh, writing. Uh, okay. I did the lyrics in Camino Arrival and our guitar player wrote all the music, but in Radio Courtesy, I actually kind of pulled out the, the piano and did write a lot of the, the songs. What made you want to do like, what, what made you want to sing? I mean, did you take voice lessons or, I mean, did you just know, Hey, I can sing. Were they looking for a singer? How, how did that all come about? I mean, it, cause that's a pretty, I mean, that's like the main focus is <laughs> on you as a singer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, one of the things 
So I grew up singing. My dad, um, when I was very, very little, he played guitar and he would kind of trot me out in front of the grandparents and play guitar and I would sing and then kind of just grew up, you know, in the theater and stuff like that. My dad was really into theater. So you knew you, knew you had a voice. You knew, hey, I can sing. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy singing a lot. And I got, um, I think the first time I ever really thought, oh, maybe I can sing, I suppose, is um, when I got my first solo in a school play when I was like in first grade. And so, yeah, just kind of did that, um, did a little bit of theater in high school and, and college. And then after this whole thing of realizing that being Mormon and married in the temple wasn't for me, uh, one of the things I realized was for me is being in a kick-ass band. So I started auditioning, actually, uh, for a band. I found them on Craigslist and Went from there. <laughs> what what kind of music was it? So the original way I kind of segued in was through uh, this band I found on Craigslist, which was an acoustic cover band that covered like 80s and 90s pop. So like Prince and, you know, stuff like that, um, which was kind of interesting. And then um, myself and one of the guitar players from that started Radio Courtesy, which was very much a tsunami bomb kind of just really fun bubblegum pop punk kind of stuff. It was really fun to play very simple kind of, you know, the the whole three chords and, you know, verse chorus verse chorus bridge kind of thing but, yeah. yeah but it was fun and it was good it was good music what was your favorite th i mean like what was your favorite thing about playing music like like being in a band i see and i just i really enjoy performing so you the, the being in front of people and yeah and, and it's and, not like in a weird like egotistical way like it's a yeah, even if it was <laughs> who cares you know what i mean that's that's <laughs> that's what you like so why not it's true but really it's it's more like it i don't know i just I like being up there and just like singing my guts out. It gives me a high, you know, and so it really doesn't matter if there's any people there, although it's a really, you know, good vibe and good energy exchange when there is. But I just like to get up there and just like, ah, you know, get it all out. <laughs> did you just play here in Utah or did you ever play outside of Utah? Just here in Utah. Do you miss playing music? Yeah. Do you ever think about Someone it? Someone be in a band with me. I need it so bad. I mean, would you really start up a band? Would you yeah. Would you like that? Fuck yes. So then why don't you do it? Have you ever been in a band? I've never been in a band. Everybody who's ever been in a band will be laughing at that, I hope. Yeah, musicians are notoriously kind of flaky and difficult. and. Um, but but there wouldn't be bands if, if people didn't. I mean, there, sure. we need music. But for every band that somebody's in, they've been in like 12. You know what I mean? Sure. Like they come and go and people sort of move on with their lives. And I'm not like a high school kid anymore that can just like that have that be my life and, you know, go on tour and stuff. Like I've got stuff here going on. And yeah, I don't know. I, I'm definitely trying, but it's, yeah, I, I would love to. So you, you do put some feelers out there. Hey, oh, yeah. yeah. Every to... once in a while, I'm like, hey, you, you play drums? Do you know like any bass players? <laughs> <laughs> oh. what uh it, let's say you could learn an instrument let's say okay you i don't know if, if you could play any instrument what what instrument would you like to play guitar yeah i would love to play guitar i've tried to learn a couple of times i just think it's I a don't tough instrument the... believe it or not i mean i i've i've had guitars and guitar lessons and i don't know if it's just not the dedication to sit and practice but uh i don't know yeah it's it's uh well, now, you, okay, so podcasting, let's get into to Hello, Sweetie. How, how long has Hello, Sweetie been around? Because you, you, you've got about how, three, four years now, right? We have just barely celebrated our four-year anniversary, yeah. Okay. What do you like better, podcasting or music? I mean, is that kind of an awkward, hard question? They're I guess they both so, probably provide something different. They're so different. Yeah. I mean, I would have to say probably singing, performing music, just because it's a different kind of yeah. feeling. It's more gratifying in, sure. in like a physical way <laughs> it's yeah. physically gratifying um but podcasting has reaped a ton of rewards that i didn't really foresee when we were originally getting started i've been able to connect with a lot of people in really meaningful ways and um that was completely a surprise for me so the i how did the idea for hello sweetie like uh were you listening to a podcast were you were you 
did you know some podcasters? I mean, share that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of the above. All um, the above. We've yeah. Um, because especially four years ago, I mean, even I, I think podcasts have even exploded more over the last four years. So yeah. four years ago. We were lucky. We sort of caught this magical wave that we've been very fortunate. Like, um, there's this to kind of start this a little bit off the subject, but there's that great song that's like the graduation song, you know, Baj Lerman narrates it. It's the always wear sunscreen. Anyways, there's this great line from that that says, um, your, your, your chances are, or your chances are half luck. So is everybody else's basic, excuse me, basically. And that I feel like is what happened with us. Like we had this really great idea right and we had this preparation and we had this desire but then we were just very very lucky <laughs> to have caught this sort of geek girl wave and the sort of podcasting wave at the same time um but yeah at the beginning um i actually my husband at the time uh was doing a podcast with a friend of yours that we know our friend jeremy and um so he had the equipment and stuff. And from being in bands, I was familiar with how to use GarageBand and, and do stuff like that. I was also a big fan of podcasts and um, geek show podcasts in particular. Of course, I listen to because I am a geek. And um, there was an episode in particular they were talking about that they didn't uh, have a girl on the panel, you know, and they were kind of talking about that people viewed them however way and discussing it. And uh, our friend Lee George Cade uh, made the comment, you know, if if a girl wants to start a geek podcast, then she will. And I had like this, you know, <laughs> moment where I was like, I am that geek girl. <laughs> he probably didn't think anybody would take him seriously either, though. No, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you start, I mean, you're like, I want to start this podcast. Yeah. But I want to have other people do it with me. Is that kind of what? Yeah. So I started thinking like format wise, like what I wanted to do. And I, you know, I was on roller derby and so um, had a couple of geeky girlfriends already that I kind of, um, you know, nerded around sure. with. And so um, I kind of I wanted that. And the experience that I want to replicate is I was driving down. And I lived in Daybreak, which is like a million friggin miles away from my friendly neighborhood comic book store, Dr. Volt's a million miles away from anything correct <laughs> <laughs> so i was driving down there like two or three times a week um yes to buy comic books but mostly to talk to my friends about the latest episode of doctor who and if we were going to be going to you know the next avengers movie or you know whatever and so that was really the experience that i wanted to replicate was this this um going and getting together at the comic book store to geek out with your friends kind of thing so i knew i wanted to have a panel and then at that point i realized kind of more my desire for this was to have my voice be represented because if this was going to be a podcast you know uh that a girl a girl geek is going to make i wanted it to be i didn't want to have a token male do you know i i i thought about it for a little while and then i just kind of was like i don't think we need to have a gimmick i think we need to be confident in our own voices and so then that was really when the idea solidified that this was going to be a show by geek girls for everybody but mostly the goal was to support women in the geek world because if you can think four years ago this is the the time when the the phrase fake geek girl is being coined sure yeah and women in in the geek world are kind of getting we're we're getting high in number enough that people are starting to notice us and we're bumping against some people so i think it was really a calling to to something you know called to me to say like our voices need representation at this time. And we were around for about a year working on our format, kind of figuring out what we wanted to do. Uh, we had another girl, uh, her name was Jen. She was a part of the show for the first year. And then she had some conflicts, had to step down. We found Rebecca Frost, of course, stepped in and took her place. And then that's when the kind of magic really started to take off and the, the personalities really started to click and, and we really started to get traction. And that's, I mean, that's important. Uh, you know, I've, had different people on, on this podcast and it's important. I mean, you could be best of friends in the outside world, but for some reason behind a microphone, it's a different type of chemistry. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of connection. Yeah. And if you don't have it, which, which, which you all do, well, let's go down the list. Who's, who's on hello, sweetie. And yeah. I, yeah, obviously I want to get the rest of y'all on the podcast. And <laughs> yeah. So if you're listening, but, uh, 
you go ahead and share who's on Hello, Sweetie. Yeah, and I can kind of. So at the beginning, I was on roller derby with uh, it was myself, uh, Jen, the other girl. Um, Rebecca was in roller derby at the time, but was not a part of the show. But Crystal was on on derby with me, and she was the first one. When I was like, okay, I'm gonna start this podcast. I got to have Crystal. She had been, you know, my very good friend for a few years, and she was a perfect fit. She was a movie geek, so it was great. Um, and then, you know, I was into science and comic books and stuff like that. We had our third person, um, but then we really wanted uh, four voices. So I put up a post on a Geek Show Podcast's Facebook page of all places. How did they feel about that? Um, <laughs> did they give you any crap for that? Or, or nothing really, was ever said about nothing it. Nothing was ever said about it. But we have a really great relationship with the guys from yeah. Geek Show. We we kind of started out by calling ourselves their annoying little sister because they just kind of popped up out of nowhere and we're just like, hey, can we play with you guys? <laughs> but um, they've been incredibly supportive and accepting of us and um, and they're really great guys. So if there was ever anything, it it was all in good, you know, spirits. But um, Danielle responded to our post. We um, wanted to meet her and kind of get a feel for her. Um, and so we met her at a coffee shop. We just fell in love with her. We were, you know, it was clear to us that she was going to be a good fit. So we kind of launched from there. And then, like I said, a, a year later, Rebecca Frost uh, came along. And she is, uh, of course, the reputed daughter of Bill Frost of yeah. City Weekly. So she came um, as, of course, she has the TV background and stuff like that and um, just kind of stepped right into that role re very naturally. And then Crystal. Yeah, Crystal uh, first. Yeah, uh, yeah, you already mentioned her, yeah, I guess. Yeah, she, so. she came from roller derby. And I mean, you, you all get along. I mean, you mm -hmm. all like, I mean, you, you spend time together even outside of podcasting. It seems like, I don't know, maybe I'm yeah. wrong. I don't know. You guys seem like you're good friends. Yeah, Um. it's... It's really hard because if you think about it as the the fact that this is a family, for all intents and purposes, we are a family, this podcast. And behind closed doors, we may have our, you know, little disagreements and things like that. But, you know, we're a family and we love each other and we have each other's backs. And I think that is really the the key to it is you can't really... People can hear that. People can hear genuineness in the way you interact with somebody, I think. And you know, they can, you know, listen to this news and this stuff that we're talking about anywhere. The reason that they come to us is because, you know, of our personalities and the way that we, we get along. What, uh, what motivates you to do a podcast? I mean, I know how it is even for myself, you know, we, cause you, you guys do a weekly show, right? You, you do a we week. We do. Yeah. Do a we're crazy. Show. <laughs> we get together every, every single week for the last four years. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about that before I get to the, 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 the that question I was going to ask. So you get together every week. Yep. record a new show what i mean do you have like a day of the week that you get together and record yeah or is it when whenever you can get together or how, how talk about that uh yeah that evolved um <laughs> really quickly <laughs> it started off as like a when can we get together but yeah no we uh we get together on sundays we record um that way we have the latest box office numbers because that's part of our deal yeah. and um crystal who not only is she a part of the panel but she is our amazing and talented producer she edits the show in two days and then we post it on oh, tuesday nights wednesday mornings so okay they'll have it in their itunes wednesday what motivates you that that's what i was going to ask you because to do it week after week like yourself yeah to to say fuck <laughs> i gotta do this again i gotta do another podcast i mean what drives you to want to do it it's fun Okay. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, I would like to think that even if the microphones were off, we would get together and talk about this stuff in some way. Anyway, um, we love our listeners. We want to give them a good quality product and we want to give it to them consistently. So that drives us. That's what drives us on the days that it's hard. <laughs> you know, the days that it's because it's Sunday afternoon, man. You know, sometimes you're hungover or it's rainy or <laughs> you just want to Netflix and chill. And the last thing you want to do is, is, ah, oh, fuck, we got to, we got to record, yeah, you climb know. Climb out, drive across town and get out and let's bitch about the latest Marvel film. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, the other thing is that, again, the, the, the ladies on the show with me, 
are so supportive. That's the key is we have, you know, we have to be able to give each other permission to take care of our own lives. And you get burnout, you know, it's a real thing that happens. You have to be able to say like, hey, I have school, I can't be, you know, on the show this week. And again, that's like the really nice thing about doing, you know, having four of us on the show is, although the show is always better when all four of us are there, you know, we can kind of give each other opportunities to to take breaks if we need to. What's the most frustrating thing with doing a podcast? Oh, the most frustrating thing about doing a podcast. Do I have to pick just one? Well, <laughs> just a couple kidding. a couple things. A couple well, let's no. see a couple frustrating things. Um, I'm I'm curious even on myself if they're the same things that I get frustrated with. I don't well, know. Well, uh, okay. So, like, not real problems, but just things about sure, podcasting things that aggravate are, you or where yeah. can or what time is your podcast on? You sure, know, sure. Um, where can I watch your podcast? You know, stuff like yeah. that. Um, what's a podcast? The fact that we are uh, passionately dedicated to this form of media that is, for some people, already played out, and for other people, a complete mystery. I think is. Well, a bit what do of a you challenge. mean by played out? What, what do you, you think it's played out the the medium of podcasting um i think there are a lot of people that that kind of come back with everybody's got a podcast now i think it's just becoming pervasive but i think that's the great thing about the the media is that it is or the medium that we operate in is that it's accessible to everybody you have a lot of choices about you know what to listen to and so i think as a consumer it's actually really great but you it is kind of maybe maybe just for me getting to the point where it's like oh listen to my podcast and they're kind of like oh yeah you and everybody <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't find i mean i i guess maybe if like la i don't know i don't find that many people in salt lake have podcasts That's i don't good. know maybe I, I don't know i don't know i and maybe the i think the better ones will rise to the top anyways you know cuz yeah. the the other ones might kind of sink you know after five or six episodes yeah well and it's i mean of course consistency and, and being dedicated to your audience is a big part of it um but i think an, another thing too is that we're a very supportive community and i think that you know the podcasting community here in salt lake is actually incredibly welcoming and collaborative and so i think too you find that podcasts that help each other and sort of work together tend to you know benefit from each other and, and sort of rise out of that too. What do you know now? Like that you wished you knew in the beginning, maybe, you know, again, back to you say everyone has a podcast, maybe somebody's thinking of starting one. So what is, what is something that you wished you would have known in the beginning? So <clears throat> the advice that I give to everyone who I think who is like starting a podcast, it, it, you know, the, the one big thing I wish I would have known is that it's hard. <laughs> it's, a lot of work that you, you know, people, um, at least for me and maybe you too, assume a lot of times that podcasters get paid for what we do. And the truth is that we don't. For most of us, this is a hobby and it's a, a, a you know, passion project. And so it's a lot of hard work and, and you're going to get tired and you're going to feel like giving up a lot and um, you're going to have to work for your notoriety and you're not going to be able to ride on other people's coattails and cross, you know, uh, promote your way up to the top. You've, you've got to make sure you're making a good product first. And to do that, it's, it's going to be hard, yeah. but buckle in because it's very rewarding. Like I said, I've, I've really gotten a lot of opportunities to connect with listeners and fans on really real levels. And of course, Comic-Con was this weekend and getting to have people coming up to me at the convention and saying like, you know, you helped me talk to my daughter about feminism and stuff like that is really, you know, rewarding. Have you got to meet like anybody, you know, because of your podcast? You know, do you have any like really cool because of my podcast? I got to you, you were shaking your head. Yes. Well, uh, what what uh, what do you think your podcast has helped you accomplish or meet? Who, who have you met? Well, we've met um, because of Comic-Con, of course, sure. I mean, because the, but that's the playground that we work in. You know, we're geeks and that's where that's our Valhalla. <laughs> but I'm sure Comic-Con is even a different experience because you have a podcast versus just an average yeah, person who's going. Exactly. We got to be on a panel I got to, I got to moderate a panel with Felicia Day on it at FanX last wow, year. That's yeah, cool. It was like mind blowing. Like I kind of like 
just went into this other headspace where I was just sort of watching it happen, you know? It was like an out-of-body experience. She's fantastic. Did you get an interview her at all? Um, like for your she was part of the panel. Oh, part no, of the panel. No, not for the podcast, unfortunately. That's, you know, I mean, they don't want to hang out with us. You but, never know. You got to ask. Yeah, and then um, I got to also at the first Comic-Con, I got to moderate Dean Kane's panel, um, for, uh, like his celebrity panel, which was cool. So I basically got to interview him. Um, but Crystal was the one that won out that year. Rebecca got to interview or got to moderate Kevin Sorbo and she was happy about that. But Crystal got Manu Bennett to take his shirt off. I think she <laughs> won the con. <laughs> she wins all the cons there, right? I mean, with that one, I mean. Do you guys do interviews on your on your podcast at all? Mm-hmm. Do you do have interviews? Yeah, from time to time we do. Um, we have guests more sure. than than interviews, but uh, yeah, we do. Um, again, at, at Comic Con, if anybody will let us point a mic in their face for five minutes, like we'll talk to them. But um, we really had this goal again at the beginning of keeping this a community podcast. We want this to be a local podcast. We are. We are Salt Lake, <laughs> but, um, but that's, that's kind of the, the, the difference for us is, um, what was the question again? I trailed off. You can edit this out. Please, oh, well, God. <laughs> no, no, no. I was like interviews on your podcast. Oh, that's right. Like, Thank you. Uh, people on your podcast. Yeah. As we, we typically interview locals, um, of different varieties that sort of our audience would have an interest in. So like we've interviewed, um, people who work at corset shops and the captain of the U of U Quidditch team. And, um, you know, we've interview, um, people who are promoting books or if they have a web series. Um, so that's more the kind of interviews we do is just kind of, um, special interest kind of stories and, and things that our audience would maybe think is kind of cool. What's your, uh, what's your all time favorite movie? You know, I, I want to pick, I want to find out a little bit more about you again, kind of back to uh, charity here. What, what, what's your, do you have like an all time or favorite three? Favorite three, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. That's um, a good movie. Yeah. Uh, despite the manic pixie dream girl trope, I still think it's a, it was a great comic and that just translated well. And, and yeah, good one. Um, I really like, uh, the emperor's new groove. <laughs> that was my favorite movie in high school. Um, yeah, and then L.A. Story. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's an old Steve Martin movie from yeah, the nineties. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, where he talks to the sign. What about TV shows? You got any TV shows that you're nerding out on right now? Yeah, geeking out on. I love everything. I'm a huge TV like junkie. More than even movies. Yeah. Oh, way more than movies. I love. Like all the adult animated stuff, but like Rick and Morty, if you're not watching Rick and Morty, you need to be watching Rick and Morty. Um, Bojack Horseman was just on Netflix. Um, I love, uh, I like Gotham. People are talking a lot of shit about Gotham. I don't know, man. I like it. It's a fun story. I think I just, I haven't watched Gotham yet. I, I don't, it's just another take. I mean, it's, it's the Jim Gordon story, you know, it's CSI Gotham. There's it's it's more of like a mob mafia kind of story. I don't like I don't know. People can <laughs> Hey, everybody has their opinions on TV shows, you it's, know what it's I mean? True. It's it's it, it, that's I was just curious, you know, what uh what what you've been watching or yeah. what you would recommend or what you would Yeah, I'm I'm a huge My Little Pony fan actually. I really? don't know if you knew that. Yeah, I, I didn't. I got to be on the My Little Pony panel at Comic-Con. It was probably my favorite panel that I got to be on. Just talking about My Little Ponies and mm-hmm. and and what I, it's a, that it's would have been. <laughs> it's such a great show. It really is. It's very well written, and the I mean, there's there's a Top Gun episode. There's a Big Lebowski episode. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. It's 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 surprising how much like Adventure Time and Phineas and Ferb and kind of uh, what's the other one? regular show? Kind of those cartoons that are more geared towards adults or more acceptable for adults to watch you'd be surprised it's very much like that yeah i'm a huge uh, huge brony like not even closeted about it let's say you found out you had a month to live oh man completely different direction here let's <laughs> let's say right? you, you found sad out you had a pony <laughs> sad pony how how would you spend your last month 
Like, say you woke up tomorrow and you got your doctor called you up and said, I have bad news. And it's, I mean, you knew I only have a month. Mm -hmm. How would you spend that month? So I'm uh, afraid of flying. So at that point, I would probably just not be anymore and probably like fly around Europe. I'm a big history buff. So probably go check out some castles and France and England and stuff like that. So you're afraid of flying. I am. I, I mean, do you fly at all now? Like, what's your what's what's the longest plane ride you've ever been on? Um, I flew to New York. Yeah, I flew to New York. That's I think the longest one I've ever been. And on. How do you handle it? How do you, I mean you you get anxious? You're you're. I mean, do you a lot of alcohol or what? <laughs> yeah, lots of everything. You can <laughs> Give just... them all to me, all the pills. <laughs> yeah, there's like a Ramon song about that. Yeah, just all of the things. Get me on the plane. <laughs> But yeah. But you but you survive. I want to be sedated. Yeah, I do. What yeah. what took you to New York if you don't mind me asking? Um it, I was for a business okay. trip. Like so, not even anything cool or fun. What's your well, is alcohol? What's your drink of choice? What uh what what's your go-to drink like if you're at a bar? So it varies by the season. I'm actually quite like a beer connoisseur. So I like drink beer by the season and do that whole thing. Um, but in the summertime, like cocktail wise, I've been drinking gin all summer. For some reason, it's just been my my booze. So gin and tonics, but um, you could take gin and Sprite and any kind of like fruit and just like squish it all together. And that's like great. What accomplishment are you most proud of? Probably the Hello Sweetie podcast. Okay. Honestly, it's been the only thing in my life that I mean I've been able to see come from this nebulous idea to something that was actually working to now here I am with you and I mean who am I you know (laughs) so yeah who who am I though? That's the thing too. You know, I mean, I'm <laughs> just like you. I mean, We're I just, all just yeah. <laughs> just, you know, bought a couple of microphones <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm all. <laughs> what is something that most people don't know about you? Hmm. Is there anything that comes to mind? You know, or or have you done a pretty good job just laying it on the table? It's like okay, I'm I'm, a, I'm an open book. Um. I try to be pretty open, but it's only because I I have my sort of emotions on my sleeve inadvertently a lot. So I am not good at not showing it, so I might as well explain. I think probably the thing very few people know about me is that I am always uh, afraid of saying the wrong thing i get very nervous in front of other people <laughs> i think i think of most people i think i think that's pretty common with a lot of people i know even with myself you know i'm worried oh gosh did i say the wrong thing is that why you know this or that you know i, I don't think you're alone in that department that's, though that's good so it's just a that's what i'm kind of slowly be realizing as i'm getting more and more like adulty and stuff is that we're <laughs> all sort of just like bumping into each other going like, Oh shit. Oh, sorry. I don't know. What are you? Okay. And you know, (laughs) we're all overgrown kids just trying to get through the day, get through the week. Right. I think when I look at like our parents, like we have this illusion when we're kids that our parents know, you know what they're doing. And then you like get older and you realize like, no, your your parents were just like getting through their work day too, just going like, all I want to do is go home and watch Married with Children, man. That's all I want to <laughs> do. I just want to eat pizza rolls and play Nintendo and, you know, yeah. so you don't feel so alone. <laughs> I, I, I wrote something. I, it was like a tweet years ago about like, a, you know, be, miss being the age uh, about, you know, like you said, you know, uh, something about, gosh, my mind is blanking as I'm trying to say it. But but like you said, when you're like ten, you think, "Gosh, I can't wait till I'm thirty when I'm gonna have all my shit together." Right. And then now, when we're in our thirties, we're like, "Oh, we still don't have our shit together." It's right. We're just like, "Oh, wait." What? It's a battle. Did it, I miss the day they handed out the shit we're supposed to have together? If you could be an extra on any TV show, back to the TV question, your favorite TV show. Is there a TV show that you would like to be an extra on? Does it have to be current? A- any TV show. This okay. is, a, you know, they're all hypothetical questions, obviously. Right, because Firefly all, always. Firefly is like my all-time, so. 
Don't you you have it? I remember hearing or reading somewhere you have like a, a firefly tattoo on your back. I do. Do you want to see it? I, it it's it, an it, audio it, podcast. It's an audio. Know. She's okay. Let's see the pod. Let's see the uh, the podcast. The the tattoo. Hey, that is actually really cool. Who did who did the who did that tattoo? Buddha Big Deluxe. Okay, I'm not, I'm not familiar with his work, but Big Deluxe only has the best and as I could see. Yeah. With that, what made you decide to get that tattoo? Just your love of firefly, I guess. Uh, well, actually that I there was a reason that I decided to get it. I was um so this was after Okay, here's something that a lot of people don't know about me. I've been divorced twice. I, I knew you were married at least once, but I didn't know you were divorced twice. Yeah, I tried not to kind of make it a thing on the podcast when I was going through them and stuff. But yeah, um, I've been divorced twice. Um, so when I was going through my second divorce, I was like 27 and like, oh, crap. I thought that was going to work out and it didn't, you know. And I was kind of in this place in my life where I was like, okay, I had a plan that didn't work. I had a plan B. That didn't work. So now where do we go? And I find that in times like that, I will go back to my old standards. And I started rewatching Firefly and kind of realized that that story is at its core, a story of a group of people who are living in a circumstance that's just very different from what they expected. Same as me. And so there's some catchphrases and things in the show you like, you know, you can't take the sky from me. And that's in the, the theme song. And it was very much became an allegory for me of sort of finding my own place to stand when I felt like the ground was taken out from under me. And so that is what prompted me to get my firefly tattoo. Really cool. Really Thanks. cool. If you could have any pet, any pet in the world, is there a pet you would, you know, like me, I would like a monkey. Or yeah. You know. what, what about yourself? So I would want a giraffe. Ever since I was like a little girl, I always said, like, if I was ever a gazillionaire, I would have a giraffe. I just, I don't know. I guess it could never come inside, though, because of the no. low ceilings. But you could, you'd have to have like a whole field compound thing. But... It wouldn't it be cute? It could like stick its head through like the kitchen window and you could like feed it carrots. <laughs> Let's say somebody's visiting Salt Lake. You know, we always gotta get into the Salt Lake questions. These are these are oh. these are the, the best parts of the show. Yeah. Let's say somebody was visiting Salt Lake for the first time. Yes. Where would charity say you gotta go visit this area, you gotta go visit this place, any place in this area? I almost always send people to restaurants because that's how I travel. Right? You're right. like, boom, I got to go to the local restaurants yep. or, or... And I do that. I don't want to go to the touristy places, you know? Like, I mean, if some place is like, oh, you know, I have the world's best whatever, I might go and try it. But in general, you want to eat where the locals eat, right? Sure. So I send people to Gormandy's. Been there? Uh, right. It's like 300 East, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gormandy's. Yeah. 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 Their pastry is fantastic. Most people know that, but they're almost everything on their menu is really great. Um, I usually tell people to go to squatters and get the nitro oatmeal stout. That's or you can the get the, the, the samplers. World. I don't it, when yeah. uh, when Nikki and John. I don't know if you Danielle. I know mm -hmm. uh, hung out with us for the day mm -hmm. when we we gave them a tour of Salt Lake. We went to Squatters mm -hmm. and they got all the beer samples. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get all the they're like fifty cents yeah. and they're like little shots of beer. You can't go wrong. But they're try home. all the Squatters uh, beers. It's so good. Um, you, I mean. Yeah. Well, where are some of your favorite places to eat now? What 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 do you have any favorite local restaurants in yeah. or is it I go to Os Sushi downtown. Do you ever go there? They're um they're in Oshucks, uh downtown oh, yeah, like by yeah, the Hermans. Yeah, downtown, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. They have half price, their whole menu half price twice a day. So, you know, when you're broke it's like a really great place to go get good sushi for really cheap. Or if you're not into sushi, you can take your friends that don't eat, you know, sushi or whatever, and it's their whole menu, you know, so it's a little more open. Um, I love, I love downtown. I actually used to live downtown. I, I take people to the downtown library. It's actually my favorite building in Salt Lake. The architecture is just incredible. Go up on the roof and the beehives and, mm -hmm. and, uh, the view and, uh. Yeah, it's gorgeous. What is something, that you would change about Salt Lake? If you could change a, a, a one thing, two things, three things, what are some things that you would like to see different? 
I would love to see Salt Lake. Well, and we're getting this way, but I would love to see Salt Lake just become a little bit more friendly to the non-majority way of thinking. And downtown is a great example of where it's getting better. We've got, um, you know, really great performance arts groups. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Bad Kids Collective. They're really great, um, you know, LGBTQ uh, performance art troupe that performs at Metro a lot. Um, you know, you've got a lot of like the graffiti art and really cool shops like Raunch and stuff. But when you kind of go a little bit out from the downtown area, it becomes a little bit less friendly, I think, to the to the alternate way of thinking. Um, specifically, I think I would like to see um, more programs uh, and and more support for women and women's health. Uh, this whole Planned Parenthood shit that's going on right now, right? <laughs> oh, it's just really sad because those programs are so essential for for people for like um, cancer screenings and yeah. you know stuff like that 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 people don't think about um, and yeah and and more support for for medical marijuana and I think that that's, amen to that one I think that that's coming it is it, surprisingly I mean I know they had a recent uh, thing you know that they were trying to uh, present mm -hmm. I followed it briefly because I knew it probably wouldn't go but it went further than what I thought it would and from Most what people yeah it would only lost by one it was one, one vote. vote and supposedly even that was kind of like well they something wasn't presented well or something like yeah that, it was but. something like let's uh it wasn't the idea as a whole that they uh -huh. didn't support. It was just some wording in the bill that they said, like, you, you want to go back and fix this and, and re, you know, present yeah. another time. So I think it's coming, um, because, uh, Salt Lake City is one of the most, uh, gay friendly cities. It is in the nation, which. I, not, I think it's awesome, but it blows me away. But right? I think it, I, I, I am, I love it that you it never is. Thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're the geekiest, you know, city. Well, look at the Comic Con. Yeah, I mean, what is it? The third biggest in in the U.S. or is it second second, second biggest, biggest in the U.S. Yeah, <sighs> I mean that's and it's just nipping at San Diego's heels by like, <laughs> the, the you know tens of thousands. It's not very many. So I would like to think that we can become, you know, we're the least female friendly. One of the least female friendly cities. We have a huge wage gap still. We have, uh, one of the fewest, um, like number of programs for, uh, rape recovery and support and domestic violence and women's issues in general. Um, so I think we can do it though. I think yeah. Salt Lake can, can become more supportive for, uh, for women. <laughs> Amen to that one. How can people find you? Let's run down the list, uh, the website, the podcast, yourself. However, how do you, how do you want people to, to be able to find you? Any websites or, yeah. or Twitters or? Um, Facebook and Twitter are probably the best places to follow us because every once in a while we're like, oh, yeah, we have an Instagram. But you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram um, if you like disappointment at Hello Sweetie Pod. <laughs> um, we're trying. And you can uh, find us on Facebook. It's just Hello Sweetie Podcast, um, www.hellosweetiepodcast.com. Um, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, everything like that. Um, the rest of the amazing, amazing women that I'm on the show with um, also have their contact information on our Facebook and, and things like that as well. But um, do you mind if I like plug them? No, Those no, no. Any, anything you want to talk about is, I mean, plug promote whatever let's let's yeah, well, get it out you there you should follow uh like crystal and i are not as active on twitter but danielle and rebecca are pretty damn prolific and really funny on twitter so um you should follow at joss whelan which was rebecca's roller derby name which I love just it. right she was she, she is so cool uh danielle is at damn yell so d-a-m-n-i-e-l-l-e -L -L -E. uh i am Oh, I better like confirm this and you can like edit this out. I'll make it hard for you. I think I'm at Hello Cherry on Twitter and I think Crystal is at Hello Crystal underscore <laughs> because there was already a Hello Crystal. So let's see. No, that's fine. I'll get all the links at uh, IamSaltLake.com uh, for the show notes as well. She um, is... No, she is at hello underscore crystal with a K and an I. So yeah, they're, they're so great. I think, you know, there's a lot of people, I think when they, uh, when we first said we were going to do a podcast that met weekly with four women, 
that just looked at that and were like, oh, cat fight waiting to happen, you know? And we sort of feel this pressure being, you know, this female podcast of people kind of expecting us and watching for us to get our claws out and stuff. But the truth is, is I couldn't be luckier to than to be on the show with these girls. They really are phenomenal. I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> I mean, no, the fact that you, you, you guys, I mean, you appear to have a really good time. You appear, I mean, you have good chemistry behind the microphones and that's, that's tough in, in radio podcasting, whatever. And so I think you guys have a good thing. Yeah. Well, you have to come nerd I, out with us. I, I would love to. Yeah. Let's so, do it. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else you want to add before we close this out? I've had fun sitting and chatting with you and getting to know you a little bit better. And Yeah. Just thank you so much for having me. I, you're, I don't know if you know this, but this is, it's kind of like a, a club of like people who've been in I am Salt Lake. Like you're you're quite the esteemed member of the podcasting community. So <laughs> I was incredibly honored when you asked me to be on here. So just thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right. Many thanks goes out to charity for coming on this episode of the podcast. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you had a, a good time finding out a little bit about her. You know, I listened to the Hello Sweetie podcast, but I didn't know much about her life. And so this gave me an opportunity to sit down and kind of find out her story. All of the links to get in touch with her are going to be at uh, IamSaltLake.com slash 192. Connect with their uh, Facebook. Uh, subscribe to the Hello Sweetie podcast on iTunes. Let her know that you heard her story on I Am Salt Lake. Hey, there's a few ways you can help the podcast. Any help is much appreciated. First of all, make sure to share any of your favorite episodes on Facebook or Twitter. Let your family and friends know about the show. Also, you can make a one-time donation or you can make a re reoccurring monthly donation by going to IamSaltLake.com and uh, click on the Donate button. And that will help the podcast out immensely. It'll help fund the podcast, keep it moving forward. Uh, it helps with the uh, web hosting, audio hosting, uh, new equipment, and uh, much, much appreciation and much love to uh, everybody that has uh, supported that. I uh, just want to give a really quick shout out here to a recent donation that we just barely got in. It's from Matthew Kidd. I want to thank him for uh, the recent donation uh, that he made through PayPal uh, here to the podcast. Many thanks, Matthew, for your donation. Anyway, if you're not subscribed to the I Am Salt Lake podcast, make sure you do that. Uh, subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher Radio so you don't miss a single episode. The episodes are always free, so uh, subscribe. Feel free to drop me an email, IamSaltLake at gmail.com. Love to hear from the listeners. Love to hear your thoughts. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, all I Am Salt Lake. And uh, stay up to date on everything and anything I Am Salt Lake. Hey, with that being said, I'm going to quit talking. I'm going to end this episode. You guys have a great week, and uh, I'll catch you again next time. Bye now.